When the trees started falling, I knew I was in trouble. Major hurricane Idalia is flooding downtown, leaving homes destroyed. were so powerful. The storm season was quickly approaching, and yet with barely a gust of wind, everything was falling apart around me. It was disease that brought it down, the second one this month, like a wounded soldier already having accepted its fate. It was rotten and done for. I guess its time had come. But as the old crumble away, there is still hope for the survival of new life. I almost stepped on the two baby squirrels that came down with it. Cold, hungry, having fallen from God knows how high. I named them Nutso and Bark for the time being. Whether the mother lived, I couldn't know. So I did what I thought best. Fed them, nested them, and, according to the internet, attempted to coax the mother back with the cries of her desperate young. And then I waited, with no sign of reunification. I waited, hours on end, and then I waited some more. I tried to do the right thing, but even then, it only brought upon their death. But the raccoons have to eat as well, I suppose, and all things must come to an end. I just fear that before they do, they will rot and corrupt, and that despite our intentions, doing the right thing only leads to further inevitable destruction. The only solace that we have in the present is that the worst of the storm has yet to come. The rapidly intensifying war between Israel It seems like every day now, World War III is about to begin. That the big storm is finally coming to end us all. And even now, I just can't catch a break. This big ass branch almost landed right on the tent. And if that big one landed on me while I slept, it'd be over. I think it's about time that I packed everything up and tore the tent down and moved it. I'm not looking forward to doing that, but what choice do I have? I think one of the things I should do is build a platform to put the new tent on in its new position. That'll help out with a lot of the problems I've been having. There's carpenter ants and small roaches that live under the leaves around here. And living in a low-lying swampland, Brings in a lot of pooling water. <coughs> this mold can't be good for me. If you're ever fortunate enough to be able to purchase a home or land to live on, you better choose the location wisely. Anything that seems too good to be true probably is. You might have been swindled into buying a home above a sinkhole, land poisoned by a chemical spill, or in some diseased marshland full of dying trees. But even if, if you truly think you finally secured that perfect location, think again, because the government can and will take it all away from you under the guise of it being repurposed for the good of the public. They do this through what is known as eminent domain. This is probably the last day for the next maybe week, week and a half where it's not gonna be pouring rain. So I really gotta get this deck done. The Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution offers some loose protection against unjust land seizures by the government, stating, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation, where private property is property owned by a private citizen or non-government entity, which can be seized for public use. This is gonna take forever. Narrowly interpreted and traditionally defined to mean the government using the property to build roads, schools, and other beneficial public infrastructure. This Florida humidity really brings out the mosquitoes. In exchange for just compensation, the fair market value of the property based on an open and competitive market. Good lord. A price both willing buyer and seller agree upon. All right, the deck is complete. This will definitely help keep the tent off the wet ground. So how could a land seizure possibly go wrong? Well, don't ask the American Indians sent on the Trail of Tears, because they're all dead. 
Let's hear it from a trusted source. Hello, citizen, it's me, the government. And I've just been informed that your land, you mean the land that my house is on that's been in our family for generations? Oh uh, yes, that land. Well, it turns out your land is located directly where a new business commerce center is proposed to be built. And that's gonna bring in a lot of new tax dollars. So we would like to acquire it from you for a fair price. How does $400,000 sound? Actually, it looks as though some developers have been buying all the surrounding properties in your neighborhood and purposely letting them get run down. Because of that, we can really only offer you $200,000. Absolutely not. I raised my family here. It's worth way more to me. I refuse to sell for that insulting price. Well, our developer friends sent out their own appraisers and they've determined that your property is worth really only about $150,000. So unless you wanna get tied up in a prolonged and expensive legal battle for the next 10 years, then I suggest that you take our just compensation. No. Okay, hard ass, then we're just gonna use eminent domain to take your property. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely our government wouldn't rob its own citizens of their livelihoods in exchange for money given to them by private industries who want to acquire the property to expand their own profits. No, you're not thinking that, because you know better. And that's exactly what happens time and time again. In the 2005 case of Kilo vs. New London, Connecticut, a small coastal city full of residential homes and businesses found itself at the center of a controversial legal battle surrounding property rights and the government's power of eminent domain. Our top story tonight, residents in the historic Fort Trumbull area of New London are fighting to save their homes. On Monday, they'll head to court to resolve their dispute over land proposed for the multi-million dollar redevelopment of the waterfront neighborhood. The city had a grand vision of revitalizing this waterfront area by building a research facility for the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, along with other development projects. In order to make this happen, they needed the land upon which around 90 property owners occupied. On one side of the case, you had Suzette Kilo. My name is Suzette Kilo and the government stole my home. And other owners who didn't want to sell their homes to make way for private development. They argued that public use meant things like building a road or a school, not handing their land over to big corporation. And on the other side, you had big corporation. The case centers around several homeowners in New London, Connecticut, who filed a lawsuit after city officials announced plans to tear down their homes and build a hotel, health club, and offices. The city of New London and Pfizer, arguing that this redevelopment would benefit the community by creating jobs, generating tax revenue, and boosting the local economy. The homeowners called bullshit and refused to sell their homes for the price they were offered. And after being served eviction notices, which they rejected, they decided to sue the city leading to a series of expensive legal battles which made its way up to the United States Supreme Court. Suzette Kilo cried with joy after learning her battle to keep her home will go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Where in a controversial yet unsurprising decision, the court ruled five to four in favor of the city, stating that economic development could be considered a valid public use, horrifically broadening the interpretation of eminent domain. And so, after this long battle to save their homes, the homeowners had to accept the just compensation they were offered. Their neighborhood was destroyed, and the citizens lost. Worst yet, once the neighborhood homes were demolished, once Pfizer was allowed to move forward on its For the Public Good research facility, that same facility would never end up being built, with development canceled in 2009, just four years after the Supreme Court ruling and all in an effort to cut costs and consolidate their assets following the 2008 financial crisis. And so now, just an empty lot remains. Kilo's house has been torn down, and the lot where it once stood is vacant. Thank you, Pfizer, for your public service. It's a dirty story, but it's not one of a kind. There's the case of Pole Town vs. Detroit, in which eminent domain was used to clear family neighborhoods and commercial properties in order to build a proposed General Motors plant or Berman vs. Parker in Washington, D.C., in which many certain neighborhoods were acquired through eminent domain after being condemned with blight, a term referring to a condition of deterioration or decay characterized by vacant or abandoned homes, overgrown lots, lack of economic interest, drug addiction, you know the spots. And hmm, I wonder if a plan could be put into place to allow neighborhoods infrastructure to fall into urban decay in order to later acquire those properties for pennies on the dollar. Hmm, could this all be orchestrated non-organically? Hmm, of course it can. 
it's a dirty business. When the private utility companies Dominion Energy and Duke Energy wanted to build a pipeline from Virginia to North Carolina, they petitioned the government to enact eminent domain on the properties it cut through. When the New Jersey Nets wanted to build a new stadium in Brooklyn, the city used eminent domain to acquire the residential and community properties in the area and transfer them to the Nets. When big box retailers like Kmart and Walmart sought assistance from local governments to acquire land for new store locations across the country, they got it. It happens all the time. And the problem is clear. While there may be legitimate and beneficial reasons for the government to utilize eminent domain, that power that only the government has is being exploited by private industry in order to acquire ordinary people's private property and turn it into private profits, all with the claim that it's for the public good. Oh, fuck. I just ripped the canvas. Oh, fuck. I almost forgot to mention. When a private industry successfully negotiates with the government to seize your property, it's not the private industry that pays out the just compensation. Oh no, it's government funding, AKA your tax dollars. You are the one who pays for the seized land that is given to the big corporations. Why the fuck are we still paying taxes? Well, let's be honest here. The United States doesn't have the best track record historically when it comes to land seizures. The concept of owning private property at all is, in itself, a often controversial and debated topic. History is a series of never-ending forced land seizures, thefts, and genocides. And we can entertain the belief that individuals have a secured right to own land. But that ends when it becomes more profitable for those with the power to do so to take it away and repurpose it for a better use of their choosing. It sucks but I fear that it could be much, much worse. Because through the process of eminent domain, private citizens still have a chance of winning, of beating the US government and powerful private industries in court. And they have won in several cases, but that presents a financial burden which big money cannot take. So for them, the best work around the court system may be other, more sinister methods of removing people from sought after land. Perhaps something like a conveniently neglected and uncontrolled wildfire which burns up the homes and residents of heavily coveted land, leaving those stubborn occupants who are unwilling to sell in a state of either destitution or dead. The scale of the devastating loss now unprecedented in modern times. No trial necessary. All I know is what my gut tells me, that when governments begin taking away citizens' private property by force, it will end very, very badly. So pay your mortgage. Pretend that you own your house and land and not the bank. And when the time comes for a pipeline to be built through your backyard, don't be surprised if your property taxes get raised to unsustainable heights. You're forced to sell via eminent domain. Or worse, a derailed train conveniently spills deadly chemicals in your area. Or an uncontrolled wildfire engulfs you and everything you love. We're all slowly being programmed to give up, accept helplessness, and resign ourselves to being controlled. You will own nothing. And you won't be happy. And that's just the way it was planned to be. Well, the rains have started finally coming in and it's pouring down. The rip in the tent is leaking. I thought I fixed it, but apparently not. And now all my beans are soaking wet. My beans are getting wet. I got wet beans. The last thing you want is wet beans. It's definitely not gonna help the mildew. I think the tent is done for. The roof looks like it's about to rip from every fucking angle. I know the storm is coming. I wait for it, preparing. But 
never knowing what my role will be when it finally arrives. It's always in the night, in those crucial hours of dreaming, when your subconscious is just about to provide you with the resolution to your problems. Without fail, something will pull you away. When the trees continued to fall, I couldn't ignore the signs any longer. This is my punishment for the sin of complacency in a rotten world. It's all rotten, everything. The seeds that turn to trees turn to decay at the talons of new life. And we are all the termites of a host that we may never... No. No, we are all the bees, unwittingly a part of an unknown hive, programmed to build or destroy or... I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Seems like every day something else is just falling apart. Everything's rotting around me. Something's wrong with the soil or maybe wrong with this land in general. It was less than a month ago that this tree fell out of nowhere. And then this one fell. And now this. It's the third tree in a month. I don't have time for this. It's been raining every day, and there's going to be this two-day lull that will allow me to actually stain the guillotine and let it dry properly. So I have to get on this now. I can't keep getting distracted. So the question is, what color do I stain it? Perhaps I go with October brown for a nice traditional dark walnut look. Or royal crimson, a deep blood red, fully saturated with implied intention though certainly a bit heavy-handed in messaging. Or maybe Darkest Night, a semi-transparent black, evil to its deepest nature. I could spend a year testing out different stain colors and never being satisfied with any of them and not want to commit enough to actually spend the time and potentially ruin this thing, but I just got to make a decision and pull the trigger. <laughs> I can't keep getting distracted. But who can blame the allure? Endless scrolling and consumption of nonsense to divert us from madness. Every day is the end of the world. A new war, alien invasion, new pandemic. I think of the boomers hiding under their school desks to protect them from the bomb, or having to hide in the school closets in case of an active shooter. All desperate attempts to keep us afraid and break our morale. Now comes the climax. Of course we stay distracted. It's the only escape from a chaotic reality of which we have no control. Sell your stocks, lock the doors, and listen to us. Don't pay any attention to the slow decaying quality of your own life, because tomorrow is the next mass casualty event. Be afraid. But I just cannot care anymore. I can't keep getting distracted. But I don't think that I am well. I've lost faith in everything in humanity's ability to reverse its march towards self-destruction, in any chance of escaping the brutality that's to come, in myself. And all my dreams are of failure and regret in the inevitable big storm. The end of humanity. You killed us. You let us die. We suffered because of you. You will suffer too. You killed us.
where will we be left when we're finally rendered useless? What will we become when everything has been given to us and in exchange, everything taken away with no skills, no responsibilities, no ownership of anything, not even ourselves, no way of proving our use to society or life itself, just pigs all going to the same slaughter. Might as well make it look good. I forgot how much I hate being up here. It makes me nervous. something wrong. When I was testing these stains out earlier, they showed up a lot lighter. The black that I initially wanted it to turn out like allowed the wood grain to show through a little bit more. But once I got started, I realized that it was coming out almost pitch black on the guillotine. I mean, whatever, it's never a bad thing to have a pitch black. What the fuck? fucking tree just fell. Another one. It just barely missed the stairs. <sighs> fucking, I'm telling you something's happening. I just moved the tent to avoid getting hit by a branch over here. Now I don't know what to think. Is that one gonna fall? Are one of these gonna take me out? The fuck did I ever do to you? The fuck did I ever do? I don't think anything got damaged, thankfully. I just don't know why this is happening. Whatever. Gotta keep working. Fuck trees. Tell all your friends, let's make the plans. Let's seize the guns, let's have some fun. Bring all police and landlords too. be finally free when they all sing
it was all a dream. To think that there was still power in the guillotine. Who are we kidding? What did we expect? That the billionaire oppressors would be pulled from their underground bunkers and line up for their own executions in the backyard of some schizo martyr of a lost cause? All hopeless dreams. It's always in the night when you get awoken with the memories of everything that you've ever done wrong. What you should be doing, what you could have been and never will be. Thoughts that you... (sighs) Me. That I'm a fraud. I've fallen short of everything that I've ever tried to achieve and only ever reached a level of mediocrity. I've grown bored and apathetic of everything that once gave me pride. My blood is old. I'm done for. Music is what drives humanity. It's the only thing that seems worth living for. So I will capitalize big and hopefully change a few lives along the way. Maybe I should have had children to take on the burden of my failure to serve as a surrogate for my second chance, the first of which I squandered. How cruel an idea, when my urgent gut feeling demands of me that the end times are coming, that it's time to prepare for that final single catalyst event, the big storm, and that when it comes, I will be ready. But my true fear tells me something else. There is no storm. There never was. Just an endless trickle of light rain. No thunder. No lightning. Yet before you realize it, your boat is filled with water. And it's too late to bail it all out. I only ever awake to find myself exactly where I was before. Living the same day over and over again. Never truly awake. Just existing in some purgatory. Watching the same episode of the same show over and over again. (coughs) Waiting for the finale. But each time, never seeing the end. I'm afraid to see the end because I know when I do the show is over you know how this will end don't you Rusty you know from the moment you began exactly how this will end but you're too weak to accept it so you distract yourself Try to rewrite the script and pretend that the story is different. Something other than what it is. Oh, the lies we tell ourselves. But don't worry, Rusty. The show must go on. It always has. Fortunately, you were never the main character after all. And your role can and will easily be replaced. It's just one of those things.
Why do we wish death on our fellow man? I sometimes think that we pray for the end times because it equalizes all life, independent of wealth, success, and our status in the world's pecking order, providing us with a way out, excusing all our shortcomings, solving our problems all at once, a way to cope that in the end, none of it mattered. And we were all just dust. And the storm blew us away all the same, without discrimination or prejudice. Everything comes to an end eventually, but it never truly ends until we take control of our lives and ensure that it does. Mankind has always faced the threat of coming peril, and only when level heads endure and prevail through suffering will we see the light of the new dawn. We will prevail, and you will be happy. Would you like a glass of sweet lemonade? It's perfect when you're thirsty on a hot summer's day. It only cost a nickel, but it's worth much more. I keep the price cheap so I can sell it to the poor. The flavor is rich, the lemons grow free, and just a single sip is refreshing as can be. Pick my lemons at the orchard on the hill They have so many that they'll never know that I've been there They have so many lemons while the rest have none They don't want the lemonade to be for everyone But with a single chap, the juice will flow And we can fill our glasses up and let the lemons roll God, how sweet it will be. The ones who pick the lemons are the people down below. They work their bitter jobs, but they got nothing to show. They harvest all the lemons and they give them all away. And all they're paid is just enough to work another day. And every time we try to plant our own lemon trees, the one who owns the orchard says it all belongs to me. But if we stand together and make them all afraid, then we can fill our glasses up with sweet lemonade.